Welcome to MSGPM presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. Your app is ready, Emperor. My name is Kazim Famuide, and right now you are in the midst of checking out the New York Knicks taking on the Washington Wizards in which they compete a 15-point hat top comeback to get the win last spring. So we're going to talk a little hoops. We're going to talk a little week three football, but we can't do any of that without tagging him a tag team partner, the one and only Jeff Eisenman. Jeff, we talk about the Thibodeau effect all the time when it comes to New York Knicks and especially that defense. It showed its ugly head against this game. Talk to me about it. Well, first of all, this game that we're watching, I remember watching watching it and seeing the score last year and thinking the Knicks aren't going to lose to the Washington Wizards, right? Which which is a testament to the way that the Knicks were playing at this point in the season. The Wizards weren't that bad of a team last year, but the Knicks had to get the job done. You talk about that defense, the Tibbs effect, all right? The defense last year for the Knicks allowed 104.7 points per game. That was first in the NBA. They allowed opponents in terms of field goal percentage, 44%. That also first in the NBA. Just a dramatic difference that Tom Thibodeau brought to the New York Knicks. You imagine that they expand on that. Obviously, Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier perhaps improving the perimeter defense this year for the Knicks. Mitchell Robinson back on the interior. Missed him the second half of last season. And then the stat that I love to talk about with Tibbs, Kaz, that I keep bringing up. In seven of his eight full NBA coaching seasons, he has gone over 500. He is a great regular season coach. You can critique Tibbs. Can he expand on teams after that first season? Can he expand on playoff success? But one thing is for sure, he gets the job done during the regular season. Jeff, the biggest compliment you could pay to a Tom Thibodeau coach team is that it's not fun to play against them. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if that continues in the second season with Tom Thibodeau under the helm. But let's take from the hardwood to the gridiron and talk some NFL football. We got a high-powered offense in the Kansas City Chiefs taking on another high-powered offense in the Los Angeles Chargers led by Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert, respectively. Check out that line. They got six-and-a-half point underdogs looking like the LA Chargers. That money line with 250 and 320, respectively. And the total over under with 55-and-a-half points. Two incredibly talented quarterbacks. Jeff, what are you looking at? Well, first of all, because, you know, if people watch the tape, I came on here with you, Kaz, last week. We were talking about the Chiefs against the Ravens, and I said the Ravens weren't in the same stratosphere as the Chiefs. Now, people might say, well, the Ravens won the game. If you watch the game for the first three quarters, for the first three quarters, it looked like the Chiefs had everything together. Patrick Mahomes throws that off-balance interception, and that totally changed the game. I mean, I don't know what got into the Chiefs in the fourth quarter. I think they got outscored 12-0 in the fourth quarter. It just didn't make any sense. So now I'm coming back here, and I'm doubling down on the Chiefs because they're playing a division rival in the Chargers. The Raiders, the Raiders, have the division the lead Raiders. right now at 2-0. and I think the Chiefs, the Chiefs make a statement, I think, at home, they win by at least a touchdown. I know the spread here is six and a half. And the Chargers, that loss at home to the Cowboys did not impress me. I, I think to to lose that sort of game that you're playing well with, to let the Cowboys come back, that, that makes me feel iffy on the Chargers. I will say this. I think this game does go well over the Chiefs in two games this year. The game totals 62 and 71. And now you're playing against this high-powered Chargers offense. So I'm taking the over despite that 55 and a half line. Jeff, there's nothing that I respect more than somebody who doubles down when they're wrong, okay? You said the Ravens weren't in their league and they, and they beat the Chiefs, so I'm not mad at you for that, brother. But let's go to a another big-time game. We got, <laughs> we got Tom Terrific, the GOAT, going up into L.A. for the first time ever. He's done a lot of things in his 20 year career. One thing he's never done is play in Los Angeles, and he's taking on the Los Angeles Rams. They are one-point favorites against the L.A. Rams, led by Matt Stafford, who looked really good the past two weeks. Jeff, talk to me about this line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, what, Tom Brady has like 100,000 yards and 100 touchdowns in the first two games. But, yeah, no, he has nine <laughs> passing touchdowns. He's been outstanding so far. But the rest of the Bucks, there's still a lot of holes. That defense, I mean, look, that game against the Falcons, it was 28-25 in the, going into the fourth quarter. I know the Bucks kind of stole. Matt Ryan decided, here, have two, two pick sixes, all right? Make the fans proud, I guess, happy here in Tampa Bay. The Bucks winning two narrow games at home against the Falcons and the Cowboys. And now they go on the road, like you said, to this beautiful stadium in Los Angeles, this Rams team that's 2-0, and everyone feeling great about the Rams. And on the other side, Matthew Stafford, 599 passing yards, five TDs, 
one interception, just two sacks on the year against the Bears and then at the Colts, two I think pretty good defenses. I'm taking the Rams here. I think the Bucks will see where they're at come playoff time, but I think the Rams at home, everything that they've that they've shown, that upgrade from Jared Goff to Matthew Stafford, I think it's been incredible. And I'll take the over here, two high-powered offense. The Rams defense doesn't scare me in terms of the Bucks actually putting up points, but I don't think the Bucks defense can stop the Rams. You know, Jeff, you are making the MVP case for Tom Brady. The Bucks do have a lot of holes, but as long as they got that mid-40s guy slinging it under center, they're still going to have a chance <laughs> to win it all. Uh, last but not least, let's get into some NFC East craziness on Monday night. You got the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys look like four-point favorites against the Philadelphia Eagles. Dak Prescott looking good. Zeke starting to eat once again. There goes the money line with 210 and 170 respectively and 51 and a half point total differential going over and under Jeff talk to me here what sticks out the most the Cowboys could be 2-0 and they could be 0-2 they're 1-1 it has been a series of two incredibly close games for the Dallas Cowboys I know they got the win last week but there were just a series of things that I just didn't find you know, that impressive with them to let the Chargers, you know, I talked about the Chargers making some mistakes when we just talked about that Chargers Chiefs matchup. You know, I, I just didn't love it. Well, the Eagles, I've really liked what I've seen out of the Eagles. You know, they, they won big against the Falcons in that first game and then they lose to the 49ers 17 11. But they really could have won this game early. Jalen Rager had a touchdown called back. Jalen Hurts continues to protect the football. No interceptions in the first two games for him. It, undisputed Eagles quarterback. You watch Carson Wentz, you watch Jalen Hurts. To me, it's so obvious that the Philadelphia Eagles made the right decision. Uh, the Eagles actually outgained the 49ers last week. I think the Eagles go into Dallas. I don't know if they'll win straight up, but I'm taking those points. You give me four points, you're giving me more than a field goal. I think these teams are, are, are much closer than that spread suggests. So I would go with the Eagles here. And I would take the under because as you mentioned, it's going to be some sloppy NFC East football. The Cowboys just had a 37 point total against the high scoring Chargers. I think this stays low. You know, I thought that Cowboys offense, we all knew it was coming in, but the defense, surprisingly good. So uh, who, know, who knows what that over-under is going to look like by the end of the night. Jeff Eisenbahn, my man, always good talk with you. My name is Kazim Fami Wide. We're going to throw you back to the hardwood. This is MSGPN presented for the people by Season Sportsbook. Your app is ready, Emperor. Enjoy the game.